dear students this session is the third session for the course easy junior 6 computer organization from module 4 and this session is being prepared by myself one of mr roni anthony and mr alex thomas in single number sequence you say crop theory is possible and must be no enough to accommodate the slowest instruction so for in this particular architecture we will be selecting the clock as the clock time required to required for lw instruction now we will be saying data for development for multi cycle processor for lw sw and other instructions when comparing with single cycle processor, the single cycle processor had some weakness. The first weakness was it requires a clock signal low enough to support the slowest instruction. The example we have considered the slowest instruction was LW. That is, for example, if you are doing an R type R read operation or an LW operation, you will kill the same clock cycle. For R type add operation, you may be having a lot of idle time and the second disadvantage is that the single cycle process requires three adders that is one in the ALU and two in the program count only one was to increment to PC plus 4 and another was to increment in branch condition and the third disadvantage is it has separate instruction and data memory. The multi cycle processor are addressing these weaknesses by breaking an instruction into multiple shorter steps. Different instructions use different number of steps. So simpler instructions can complete faster than more complex ones. Processor needs only one adder, and this adder is being reused for different purposes on various steps. Processor uses a combined memory for both instruction and data. Instruction is fetched from memory on the first step, and data may be read or written on later steps. We see the design procedure for multi cycle processor. First of all, we will construct a data path by connecting the architectural state elements and memories with combination logic. Then we will add no architectural state elements to hold intermediate results between the steps. It was not required in single cycle process. Then we will design the controller. Here the controller produces different signals on different steps during execution of a single instruction which is now a FSM rather than combination logic so we will begin the design with memory and architectural state of the MIPS process here we will be having program counter uh, compared to single cycle process here we are having a Combined instruction and data memory, then a register file. In the combined memory for instruction and data, we can read the instruction in one cycle, then read or write data in a separate cycle. The program counter and register file remain unchanged compared to single cycle data. We are starting the design process. Address of the instruction will come from program counter that should be fed to our memory. Here it is instruction by data memory. Now we will be having instruction. In the later cycle, you will be having data from this memory. So, first of all, you will save this instruction to somewhere. For that, you will be using an instruction memory. In that instruction memory, we will be writing the instruction in the IR write signal. Uh, 
for a LW instruction, the next step is to read source register containing the base base address. Source register is specified in R field of the instruction that is from bits 25 to 21. So we'll be extracting those bits and we'll be fading to the register file. Then we will be taking that R's content in the read port 1. So value is stored to another non architectural register A. LW instruction also requires an offset. That offset, offset should be sign extended and should be added with the content of offset. This offset field is from bits 15 to 0 of our instruction. That is sign extender. And the sign extension is a combination operation. This will not change while the current instruction is being processed. So there is no need to assign a dedicated register to store this constant value. No. We have added the address of the base register and sign extended offset. Now we have having so now we are going to add this sign extended or offset and base address base register conduct. For that we will be using A here from this A. Source A you will be getting base register and source B you will be getting sign extended offset. Those two values we will be adding using ALU under ALU control center. For addition, ALU control should be 0, 1, 0. And this ALU result is being stored to another known architectural register which is called ALU out. Next step is to load data from the calculated address. So here we are having the calculated address at the ALU out. That is being fed to the instruction bar data memory through a MUX. And the select signal is IOD. If it is I, that means instruction. If it is D, that means data. The multiplexer select signal is called IOD that indicates either an instruction or a data address. Data read from the memory is stored to another known architecture that is which is called data. So now we have data in this data register. Finally, data is written back to register file. So that is shown over here. Data is given to WD3 and that RD, so RT address is given as 20 to 60. <coughs> must update the program folder by adding 4 to the old PC. In single cycle processor, a separate adder was needed. But in multi cycle processor, we will use the existing ALU and it can be used only when it is not busy. So what are we doing is that we will insert source multiplexes to choose the PC and the constant for as ALU inputs. So here we are having a new MUX. That MUX will select either to source A or from the PC command. Then source B we are having another MUX that will Switch according to sign extended immediate or a constant flow. 
a two input mux controlled by ALU source A chooses either the program counter or register A as source A. The four input mux controlled by ALU source B chooses either constant four or sign immediate value as source B. To update the PC that is program counter, ALU adds source A that is program counter value to source B that is constant 4 and the result is written back to program counter. The PC write sig control signal enables the program counter register to be written only on certain cycles. So this completes the data path for LW instruction. Now we will be going for data path for SW instruction. Like LW instruction, SW instruction reads a base address from port 1 of the register file and sign extends the immediate. Here you adds the base address to the immediate to find the memory address. All of these functions are already supported by the existing hardware in the data path. Only new feature of SW. That is, we must read a second register that is RT uh, instruction field 20 to 16 from the register file and write it into memory. That is shown over here. Register specified in the RT of the instruction that is 2216 is connected to the second port of the register file that is 2216 is connected to A2 that will be available over RD2 that is connected back to instruction bar data mode. When the register is read. It is stored to a known architecture register B, that is this one. On the next step, it is sent to the right data port of the data memory. Here, it is right data port of the data memory. Memory receives an addition mem writes control signal to indicate the right should occur, that is this blue signal. For R type instructions, now we see for R type instruction. The instruction is again fetched and the two source registers are read from the register file. Another input of the source B multiplexer is used to choose register B as the second source register for the ALU. ALU performs appropriate operation and stores the result in ALU out. On the next step, ALU out is written back to the register file specified by the RD field of the instruction that is from 15 to 11. Main to reach multiplexer selects whether WD3 comes from ALU out, that is for R type, or from data, that is for LW instructions. So this completes, so uh, register destination instruction selects whether register destination is specified in the RP or RD field of the instruction, that is for R type instruction, it will be in RP, and for data instruction, it will be in RP. So this completes the data path for R type instruction. So in this session we have seen uh, the performance analysis of single cycle data path, control unit development of single cycle data path and data path development that is multi cycle data path development for LW, SW and R type instructions. Thank you.